In this video, we're going to solve quadratic equations by completing the square. And we're going to follow the list of instructions on the left-hand side of the screen. And I'm going to go ahead and just jump into the first example with this list. So first, take a look at the x squared term and make sure the coefficient is 1. And in our first example, it is. So that makes us very happy and we can move on to the next step. We're going to create a perfect square binomial, and in order to do that, we need to isolate our variable terms. So I'm going to write the, express, the equation, I'm going to write the equation, and subtract 23 from both sides so that those terms are by themselves. That leaves me x squared minus 8x on the left, and a negative 23 on the right. And I went ahead and left a spot on the left hand side because I really want a perfect number that I could put in there, a perfect square number. In order to create the binomial, I'm going to take the negative 8 and find what half of that is, which is negative 4. And then I'm going to square negative 4 and I'm going to get the perfect square 16. I'm going to add that perfect square to both sides. So plus 16 plus 16. That gives me the opportunity to write the left-hand side as x minus 4 times x minus 4 because the two negative 4s multiply for 16 and they add to give you negative 8. So I'm going to write x minus 4 squared, which is perfect square binomial, equals negative 7 because negative 23 plus 16 is negative 7. Notice that every time you do this, whatever half of that um, middle term is half of that negative 8 is negative 4 and that's the number that we used in our perfect square binomial. This will happen each time that you complete the square. So just make a note and we're going to continue the problem. At this point when you're at this stage you can take the square root of both sides and you can drop everything on the left and write positive or negative square root of negative 7 on the right. And then on the right hand side we do have to break apart that negative 7 into a positive 7 and a negative 1 so that we can write that as plus or minus square root of 7 i because the square root of negative 1 is i. The i is not underneath the radical, it's to the right. And we still have to isolate x, so as a final step we're going to add 4 to both sides in order to do that. And that's going to give us x equals 4 plus or minus square root of 7i. And you can break that into two separate answers, 4 plus square root of 7i and 4 minus square root of 7i. All right, in the second example, our first step is going to take a little bit more work because we have a coefficient of negative 2 on the x squared term. So I'm going to write this equation as is, and I'm going to divide everything by negative 2 so that I can get a positive 1 coefficient on the x squared term. As everything cancels, that's going to give me x squared plus 6x on the left, and it's going to give me a positive 7 over 2 on the right. And then I'm going to complete the square, just like we did in the other example. Take 6, half of 6 is 3, 3 squared is 9, and then add 9 to both sides. So notice we're adding a perfect square to both sides and it's going to let us write the left hand side as x plus 3 x plus 3 which is wonderful. I'm going to go ahead and add 7 halves plus 9 for you on the right hand side and that is 25 over 2. So you can write the perfect square binomial x plus 3 squared equals 25 over 2. And now we're at the point um, I want to just point out that notice that half of 6 is 3 and that is the number that we used again. So remember that. That's the number that you're going to be using moving forward. And now we are at the point where we can take the square root of both sides. We're going to take the square root of both sides so that we can drop that square on the left and write positive or negative square root of 25 over square root of 2 on the right hand side. I just broke the fraction into two separate radicals so I could work with it. Now I do know that the square root of 25 is 5, and I have to rationalize the denominator. So I'm going to write plus or minus 5 over square root of 2. I'm going to multiply that by square root of 2 over square root of 2, and that's going to give me plus or minus 
5 times the square root of 2 in the numerator and a positive 2 in the denominator. And I'm going to write that back into my original equation. And the next step is subtract 3 from both sides of the equation. And that's going to give me x is equal to negative 3 plus or minus 5 times the square root of 2 over 2. And when I break that into two different answers, it's the negative 3 plus 5 square root of 2 over 2 and negative 3 minus 5 square root of 2 over 2. So it's a lot to digest, um, but I am going to give you some examples that you can practice with. And here they are. We have two examples that you can practice with. I'm going to ask you to go ahead and pause the video and then you can come back and check your work. And here are your answers. Um, we did have to work with some fractions on the left and a little bit on the right as well. Um, the, uh, another thing to note is at the beginning of the second example you did have to move some terms around so that you could get your variable terms alone on the left hand side. We also had to divide by that negative 3 so make sure you did that. And I showed you the rest of the work um, hopefully it's clear enough so that you can check it, ask your instructor if you have any questions, and good luck as you continue to work on this skill.